Hi, welcome. So I'm kind of learning how to 3D design and, and game dev and stuff like that. And I just want to have a place where I can put some things I create so I don't forget them forever. I can come back and kind of look at them and uh, at the same time kind of showing how I do things. So at the same time, it's kind of a tutorial. So yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, but I picked up on Real Engine 5 and I tried to simulate some gravity and I want to show you some results. And uh, <laughs> this is just... This is just a quick, quick animation, this is nothing what I made. Here's what I made. Pretty cool, right? I'm pretty proud of it, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Okay, good. This is what you can get. And it can get much more satisfying, it's just a very... Uh, obviously didn't try it enough, but looks pretty cool. And you can definitely get some even nicer looking things. But that's enough, let's get started on doing it. While casually... Ignoring that nuclear fusion that just got started on my screen, completely normal, completely safe for my graphics card and my computer. Don't worry about it. Let me just talk to you a little bit about physics, just so we know what we're talking about. So we're basically implementing one single law. So this formula on top will simply describe the force this particular object will experience on itself when in proximity of another object, when both of them have a certain non-zero mass. And uh, this relationship and this force depends upon the distance that separates them and a certain gravitational constant g that is fixed and is basically representing the force of gravity in our universe. Nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, so now we can actually start doing it in Unreal Engine 5. Let's do it. Let's start by creating a blank project and let's keep the settings as default, except let's disable the starter content and let's name it something relatable to the topic. Okay, let's start by saving this map uh, into our new project. Let's call it main map. Let's create a couple of additional folders. We'll need maps, blueprints, materials, and sky. Let's start by a blueprint class, a game mode class. This class is going to be actually the one where we're going to be coding the behavior. Now let's go into settings and make that game mode as default. Change the default one into our custom one, main game mode. Now let's quickly create one additional material so that we can use it later. Let's make a red one, promote top parameter, and plug it in into the base color and also into the emissive color so that we can see it without any lighting. And uh, let me just clean up a little bit and delete all the unneeded elements. We'll honestly only keep player start and sky sphere and sky sphere only for a second. And now let me quickly import the sky that I already have separately. It's not going to affect anything. You don't really have to do this. I just prefer looking at something cosmos looking like. So I'm going to import something I already have. Now, I will move the player start to look from up to down, so I'm going to put it at a 1000 height and rotate it negative 90 in Y axis, so it looks down, and we'll place object under it, that's where the camera is going to be looking. Let's create a couple of actors that we're going to be playing with, and I'm going to add a sphere, and I'm going to put it at 0, uh, 250 and 0, and uh, I'm going to put the red material on it, and make sure to simulate physics, uh, enable the mass, and I will swap it to 1, and disable gravity. And uh, let me duplicate it and put a similar one on the other side at negative 250. Okay, now that we have an environment, let's start coding on it. Open up your main game mode that we just created and navigate to event graph. Here we're gonna be using two functions, begin play and event sec. So the purpose of this function is gonna be to initialize all the variables and actors that will be in the system. So we wanna uh, gather the information about the actors in the system and not do it ever again, because it's a a uh, hefty process, we don't, don't want to do it every frame. We need four variables for the script. The first one is going to be an array of actors, so the type actor, uh, and it's going to be storing references to every uh, relevant actor in the system. Uh, the array of masses, which is going to be a float array, and it's going to be storing the respective masses of those said actors. Uh, a float constant g, which is going to be holding the gravitational force uh, constant. And finally, an integer act number of actors, which is going to be simply counting the number of actors in the system. We're starting off by looking for all the relevant actors. We're going to be using get all actors with tag function, and uh, we will be looking for a particular tag, let's say active. This provides us with a list of all the actors we need. Now let's loop through each of them and add it to our specific storage uh, that we made, the actors uh, array. Next, let's fill our masses array similarly. In order to do that, we need to take each element and access, it, access its root component 
and thanks to that we'll be able to cast to its static mesh which will give us access to its mass. And let's add it the same way to the list. I know you can do this differently, but I'm doing this like this because it allows to get the mass from both individual objects actors that I drag into the scene and also blueprint actors that I drag into the scene. Now, once the loop is complete, let me do one last thing. We want to initialize that actor number variable and we're gonna get our actors array and get its length and set the actor's number to that length. And uh, I will also incrementally decrease it by one so that when we plug this number into loops later on, it represents uh, correctly up to which limit it should loop. Allow me to clean this up. Now, let's begin our event tick function. That's where we're going to be distributing all the forces around the system. And uh, before we do that, let me just explain you something before we do that. So, we'll have a certain number of objects, maybe more than two, and every single object will have to have a, some sort of repulsion, some sort of attraction towards every other object. So, in order to cycle through all the correct possibilities, what we're going to do is create one large loop and cycle through every object that we own. And again, for that every object, we're going to be cycling again for all the other objects. So we'll have to make a logical gate to where that second inner loop uh, cycles for all the other objects in s except for the, that object itself. So that's the gate we're going to be implementing and making sure that it does not do the operation if the index of the first loop is exactly equal to the index of the second loop. Now that the order of events is correct, we need to start implementing the gravitational formula. And uh, let's start with the top of it. We need three things, gravitational pull, mass one and mass two. And uh, gravity we already have as a variable and masses are currently in the mass array. So we just need to get those values out using the indes indices that we're uh, having from the loops. Following the top of the equation, we need to multiply those three things out. Let's get ourselves a multiply element and plug all three elements into it. Now we know for sure that we're going to be ending up dividing those uh, this result by the separation squared below, so we can prep those two nodes as well. And now we need to get the distance that separates the two objects. How do we do that? It's actually pretty easy. We just need to get the actors from the actor list that we're holding and get their world locations, which are going to be used to plug into the distance to function, which is going to give us the separation easily. We can plug the result of that back into the square formula, and now the result is complete. This is the force, the magnitude of the impulse that needs to be applied upon the object towards that particular object in order to uh, satisfy the gravitational law. However, knowing exactly the force that needs to be applied is not enough because we only have the magnitude of the impulse, we also need direction. Where do we push the object? In order to do that, we need to work out the vector, the direction that our main bigger loop object is having towards the secondary second loop object. In order to do that, we need to access the root component of each actor and get, it, and get its word location. Once we do that, uh, we're basically getting the vectors, how to get to each of those objects, and if we subtract the second object's vector from the first object's vector, we're going to get the direction vector from our initial first loop object to the second loop object. However, another problem here. This is a, a magnified vector in order to get from the first object towards the second object. Uh, it already has its a magnitude which is not equal to 1, which is going to mess us up. What we want is pure direction without any extra magnitude to mess up our math. So what we need to do is uh, scale the vector down so its magnitude is equal to 1, keeping the direction proportional, the same. Uh, and the function to that is called normalize. It's going to reduce the magnitude of the vector towards 1, keeping the direction the same. Now we have pure direction that we need to send the objects to, and pure force that we need to apply on that object. We need to join those two variables together through a multiply, and that way making us the vector that has the correct direction and the correct magnitude in order to satisfy the gravitational law. The last piece that we're missing is actually applying the force. 
who do we apply the force on? I chose to apply the force onto the initial uh, object, the bigger loop object, and it's going to be pushed towards other objects. So I'm taking this uh, root component of the bottom of the initial object and I'm dragging it out to get its static mesh. I'm casting to its static mesh uh, onto which we can actually apply the force. And the function that is available to us is add force. Now the last thing to do is to plug in the vector as the additional force and uh, our scheme is actually complete. Okay, I think we're ready. There's only two things which are missing. First, is that we have chosen the tag active as the tag that we're looking for, so we need to copy it and actually paste it into the objects in the scene. And after that, we actually also forgot to initialize the gravitational force, the constant g, and we're going to be setting it to 10 million. Because we're dealing with small masses, 1 kilogram, we need to exaggerate the force quite a lot to see any difference. Also, don't confuse the component tag and general tag. We are looking for general tags. Let's see what kind of interaction we can get out of this. Last side note, uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you are creating a blueprint and then giving it a tag and then putting it into the system, giving it a mass and then this physics, it will not work with this script unless you replace the root with that object, like I'm doing here, then it will work. Also, you may experience some bugs with uh, Unreal Engine 5, for example, if an object gets too much far away, even if it has a high velocity, it may stop moving altogether. And this is a bug which is happening only in Unreal Engine 5. In Unreal Engine 4 this bug does not occur at all. This is how we can give an initial impulse to uh, a blueprint object right here. This happens every time I pause at the beginning of the play. Looks awesome.
hopefully it doesn't kill my computer. I hope. <laughs>